Ready, go! Alrighty, ladies and gents, welcome to this, uh, I guess let's call it a video tutorial today. Um, what we are going to be focusing on is, in fact, answering a question that was a uh, I guess it's a popular request for a video on Instagram uh, a couple of days ago. I, I posted the length of my forearm from elbow tip to to wrist joint, and the reason I did that was because Todd Zilla, um, Todd Hutchings, posted his, and I found it interesting that Todd Hutchings had a elbow to fingertip of 10 inches, and sorry, not fingertip, elbow to wrist of 10 inches, and I had an el have an elbow to wrist of 11 and what I say, 11 and 7 eighths inches. So significantly longer than Todd. And look, it was just an observation on my behalf and I saw a lot of people put out their measurements and we saw everything from sort of, I didn't see anything less than 10 inches and I saw as tall as 13 and a half inches from some of the, the uh, super heavyweights and uh, lankier sort of guys. but. The question came back to me on Instagram from a lot of people. Uh, what does this mean? How does this translate to arm wrestling in terms of its styles, in terms of its advantages and disadvantages? And so I thought I'd do a video that would answer those questions for you to the best of my understanding um, because they do matter. They do change the way you arm wrestle. And it's actually one of the things I love about the sport that I don't believe there is one perfect anatomy. I think that every anatomy that you uh, could possibly have um, just presents a different set of tools and a different set of strategies that you may use. And of course, it's not only about what you have, but about what your opponent has as well, because um, that in itself is gonna dictate how you need to arm wrestle. Now, um, a lot of people, John Brzezink included, um, have said in the past that the ultimate combination of arm wrestling is a short forearm and a large hand. Um, the reason in a very broad and general sense why you would think that is you think about the, the, the length of your forearm, the shorter your forearm is um, with the assumption that you gained access to your power, i.e. you got someone into your cup, um, the shorter your forearm is, the greater amount of power that you can um, deliver in the vector that is going to achieve victory. Um, the longer the arm, the harder it is. Now that's just some basic sort of physics. I don't know the formulas that are going to describe it, but I'm pretty sure the force is a multiple, multiplier of the length of your arm. So the force required um, to move uh, any given object, um, the, the further away you go, the harder it is, the closer you come in, the stronger it is. So that is true with the length of our forearm. The longer your forearm, the harder it is to impart the same amount of force as someone with a short forearm. Um, and when we talk about the hand, the hand is what gives you control in a match. The hand allows you to dictate which position, um, whether that your opponent is going to be fully pronated, fully supinated, or anywhere in between. The hand will determine where your opponent uh, is. And a lot of people, um, a lot of people are only good in one position. So if you can take control of the hand and put them in a position that they don't want to be in, you can neutralize a lot of their side pressure and finishing power. Anyway, so that is the kind of introduction to it. But I wanted to break down all of the different um, possible arms that you'll ever face and possible arms that you may have and tell you my understanding of what I think they are. So let's first of all talk about the issue at hand, which is forearm length. Um, I believe that the way I look at it is the longer the forearm, your best strategy is denial. Um, and what I mean by denial if you have a long forearm, you can be taller than your opponent. Straight away, that means your opponent has to kind of chase you. Um, they have to hold on to you when it comes to um, access. And also, uh, you've got to look and analyze the pin path. Okay, so if I have my elbow on the pad, there is an arc, you could draw an arc through space there that is the root that my arm must take in order to be pinned. Now, if my opponent is shorter than this, if their wrist is down here, okay, it they're not going to be out. They're going to have to move their elbow. So for them to pin me, 
they can't have their elbow in the same location. Now this is an advantage in a denial sense for the arm wrestler with a long arm. And the way that you take advantage of that denial is that when it gets to that critical moment during the arc where your opponent must move their elbow, you too can move your elbow and take away, because they are bound by the limits of these pads, you can put, move to a position and typically the top right hand corner, anywhere along the front edge for someone with a long arm can deny your opponent's access through the pin lines for them to finish you. Now, um, some good examples of this would be when Danny Tesh does it to me. Danny Tesh has a longer arm than me and he will come right to the front of the pad and I will hit him to about there and there's a moment just below or just above when I finish the match or what would be the victory where I kind of get derailed from my pin line because I've got a shorter arm, he moves to the front of the pad and it makes me have to reset. So broadly speaking guys, if you have a longer forearm, denial of your opponent's pin route is what I see as the advantage. Now, let's look on the other side of the coin. What is the advantage of being the guy with the shorter forearm? It's finishing power, 100%. It's just brute power. Now, I think Todd Zilla, Todd Hutchins, 10 inches from elbow to wrist. Um, we know him as the side pressure king. He's got multiple world titles and he just pins people and he doesn't care about his hand. The reason Todd doesn't care about his hand is because Given his short forearm, he is in a very bad position. He has a significant disadvantage to be the person controlling the hand because he doesn't get to start from height. He's starting almost always underneath his opponent. So if you are starting underneath your opponent, um, you really need to learn, like Todd has done, to be just as strong no matter where your hand ends up because a taller guy with a bigger hand is going to be able to manipulate the position of your hand. If they want it to be pronated, they can get it there. If they want it to be supinated, they can get it there. If they want it to be flopped back, they can get it there. But Todd Hutchins' theory, and it's a great theory for everyone with a short arm in particular, is that if you are strong from here to here, inside pressure, finishing force, whatever you want to call it, in every position your hand could possibly be in, okay, then it doesn't matter. Hand control can effectively become irrelevant. Um, of course, there is more to it, as we described in the longer arm versus the shorter arm. If the longer arm guy knows how to work his advantages, the shorter arm guy is going to have to be able to move Fox. He's going to have to create a trap so that he has the opportunity to pin. But generally speaking, what you'll find is that the shorter arm guy is all about the quick kill. Okay, They're not about the long game, the bleed. The shorter guy is going to have a much more significant advantage to his finishing power in any one given drive. But the longer it goes on, the more likely the longer arm person gets the leverage advantage and the lactic acid is gonna take over again. So that is typically what happens with the shorter forearms uh, versus the longer forearms. There are of course uh, a lot of hand things as well. Uh, I'd love to discuss them right now because they are they do relate a lot of people have big hands a lot of people have skinny and long hands a lot of people have thick hands small thick hands um, each of these things present a different set of tools in terms of what you can do with them for control so broadly speaking guys a big long skinny hand think Devin Larratt uh, think Jordan Davis um, people like that, Nicholas Nanostad, the long, tall, lanky guys with thin but long hands, they have a great ability to cup and drag, okay? The reason their long hand, think Cobra Rhodes, um, because they can reach so far around, they have great coverage here, but their hands are so big that they're also out the back at the same time. So dragging motion, chopping and dragging is a great strategy for anyone with a long, skinny hand. Um, for someone with a big thick hand, uh, the big thick hand guys think like Andre Pushka, think Dave Chafee, um, those sorts of guys were all about just 
dominating and side pressure. Okay, so those guys generally are strong. Anyone with a big, thick hands, brute power is generally where they're gonna go towards. But um, those guys are probably the most blessed when it comes to um, just potential in the sport. Uh, I think that a big, thick hand is where it's at. Richard Lupke's, all those just giant power athletes, um, that's who we're talking about here. Now, if you have a small hand, I hear a lot of people say, hey, I've got a small hand, I don't think that I can really go anywhere in the sport. Okay, it's totally not true. There are plenty of advantages to having a small hand. And the key is pronation. Okay, if you have a small, and particularly a thick, but small hand, okay, pronation is going to be a very strong tool for you. Uh, with the thicker your hand, the harder it is for someone to reach around. And when you have a small hand, you don't need to worry about trying to cover and get around your opponent. You simply bunch your fingers up and you're basically top rolling your opponent's thumb only. You just grab that thumb and you drag and twist, drag and twist. Now this is looking like a king's move. It's looking like um, a defensive position. Think people like Tim Bresnan has a great ability to pronate and twist and stop a match. I think people like Pascal Girard from Switzerland love the way that guy just pulls. Think crazy, George Zakowitz, all these guys. Even think Michael Todd. Uh, Michael Todd doesn't have a big hand relative to the super heavyweights that he's taking on. So, so you don't need to get coverage. You just need to make a fist, to use a Travis Bajan term, make a fist, grab hold of that thumb, and drag and twist. Now that is gonna be an advantage for someone with a small thick hand. Um, the last one is a small uh, but skinny hand. Okay, for me, a small but skinny hand, um, the best example I can think of is Rostam Babayev. Okay, Rostam Babayev, uh, the smaller your hand, now we're talking about from wrist to knuckle. If your wrist to knuckle is really long, you're gonna struggle with wrist rise against your opponent. But if your wrist to knuckle is really short, you're gonna have a very strong wrist rise, okay? Because that short lever that's gonna be there, you're gonna have a really, really strong and a great ability to keep your knuckles up. Now, the way to use that advantage is during your setup to get your knuckles up and don't allow them to come down. Now, when you have your knuckles up, okay, your opponent, you, you want your opponent to try to match that and when you get your knuckles up, you're gonna get a lot past your opponent. And you're gonna have the ability, you see Rustin Babayev in this position, you're gonna have this great air pocket on this side of your hand, and that's gonna allow a very sharp and fast hook to be set. So you can be a very offensive hooker if you have a small and skinny hand. So, interesting stuff. But, as I said at the start guys, the beautiful thing about this sport is there is no one, uh, biomechanical mm, setup or set of tools that is the trump card, okay? Every, every style has its advantages, every style has its disadvantages. Um, it comes down to application of it and horsepower behind it. Uh, those two things will make a difference. It isn't enough to just have the horsepower um, because someone who has the application side will be able to derail you if they have good table IQ and table sense. So develop both of them, understand what it is you have, but also understand that what you have is gonna be different for every other opponent because you're gonna take on some guys taller than you, some guys shorter than you, guys with thick hands, guys with small hands. So the better you know instinctively what someone's advantages are, as soon as you grip them up, you go, ooh, it's a small thick hand. You know that guy's gonna be pronating, okay? So just because he has one advantage in the pronation, okay, he has a disadvantage as well, as in you could rise against him and he would be struggling to keep up. So guys, know the advantages, therefore work out all the disadvantages relative to you, okay, and you're gonna develop a great table IQ and you're gonna go a long way in the sport. And then once you've got all that understanding, just go and get strong and yeah, it'll be awesome. All right, guys, hope you got something out of that. Let me know if you did. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. It was a great question. Thank you to everyone who was asking for this video. Um, yeah. All right, guys. See ya. Yeah, that's a bet!